Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I'm Tom. It's our fun unit. So, what are we going to do for fun today? We're going to talk about party idioms,、uh, fun idioms that you can use that have to do with、uh, going to a party, having fun at a party, letting your hair down at a party. We're going to talk about these pretty popular idioms. I've used all of them. Indeed, and of course we're we're kicking off the month of December, and as you know, Christmas is coming along in a couple of weeks. So you might be having a Christmas party, or going to someone's Christmas party, or maybe going to a New Year's party at the end of the month. Who knows? And of course, it's appropriate for us to discuss some ways to describe these parties, and we're going to get the party started with these fun idioms that have to do with. Parties. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's listen to the entire article, and we'll come back to break it down for you. It's the holiday season. Are you ready for a Christmas or New Year's party? Many English idioms can be used in a party setting to make the atmosphere livelier or show displeasure. Here are a few of these entertaining expressions. Let one's hair down. This idiom dates back to the 1600s. Upper-class women would have their hair pinned up in fancy styles in public. They could only let their hair down and wear it in a more natural or messy way in the privacy of their homes. Nowadays, this idiom means loosening up and behaving freely on social occasions like parties. Be a party pooper. This funny-sounding idiom. Actually, comes from a term used by sailors, saying they were pooped, communicated that they were overwhelmed. This word evolved to mean tired or exhausted. However, the term party pooper now refers to someone refusing to participate in a celebration or ruining the fun for others. A whale of a time. In the early 19th century, people used whaler. To describe something enormous or extreme, by the late 1800s, whaler had changed to whale on, which conveyed enthusiasm. This shifted into a whale of, with whale indicating something very large or someone remarkable. Today, having a whale of a time means having an exceptionally enjoyable experience. Next time you're at a party. Why not try out one of these amusing idioms? They'll make you the life of the party. All right, welcome back. Let's continue with our lesson, and now we're going to explain our article sentence by sentence and word by word. The title is "Get the Party Started" with these fun idioms. I suppose the phrase "Get the Party Started" could be described as an idiom, or at least a, a, a saying. Oh, let's get this party started,、mm. and it doesn't have to be a party, right?、Mm. Maybe you have a project or something else you're working on with people.、Uh, we have a lot of these sayings. I must. Say. Say. And if you're not paying attention to popular culture, you can quickly become kind of out of date with what people are saying and the the phrases they're using. I'm finding that to be the case, so I have to read things from the U.S. quite often just to stay on top of these phrases. Okay, well, the first paragraph says it's the holiday season, and we of course describe the holiday season as being Christmas and New Year,、mm -hmm. or any holiday. I suppose when Chinese New Year rolls around, you could describe that as a holiday season. Are you ready for Christmas or New Year's, or a Christmas or New Year's party? Many English idioms can be used in a party setting to make the atmosphere livelier or show displeasure.、Mm. So yes, we've got some、uh, phrases that are positive and are festive, and we've also got some phrases that are kind of negative. If the party doesn't go well, or if the person is kind of a stick in the mud and、uh, you know making the party kind of miserable for everybody. So yes, are you ready for? A Christmas or New Year's party, and these phrases can be used in a party setting. You can say them when you go to the party, or you can say them when you're describing a party, when you're getting ready to go to a party, or after you've been to a party. Yeah, and Tom just added another idiom there.、Uh, don't be a stick in the mud. A stick in the mud is very similar to being a party pooper,、uh, someone who. 
、uh, refuses to join、uh, the you know the the laughing and the games and the fun times, and is just kind of making everybody uncomfortable because they seem to be in a bad mood. Don't be a stick in the mud. Come on. So here's the first one to let one's hair down.、Uh, this is one of my favorites、uh, because of where it comes from. So this idiom dates back to the 1600s. It's a long time ago. Back then, we had very distinct classes, and if you were an upper class lady, you would never go outside with your hair down. It had to be pinned up. Or you know you would just completely lose face. They just didn't do that back then. Now the lower class women, they often would have their hair down because they were too busy、uh, working and making a living, and they didn't have their own maid or servant combing their hair and. Pinning it up, the upper class women all had ladies who would do their hair for them. They never combed their hair themselves, so they would pin up their hair in fancy styles whenever they were in public. Actually, some ladies would not even come downstairs into the house from their bedroom without being fully dressed with their hair pinned up. That's amazing! I don't believe it. It's incredible. But yes, indeed, upper class people always need to separate themselves from lower class people or middle class people, and they do it in various ways,、uh, in the clothing they wear or the way they pin up their hair. So yes, the women would pin up their hair. I believe this was true in ancient China as well. But、uh, then, of course, when they went inside and no one was around, they let their hair down. And they would wear it in a more natural and messy way in the privacy of their homes. So yes, indeed, of course, I I had long hair when I was in college, but、mm-hmm. I never pinned it up. <laughs> I don't know what that would feel like, but I can imagine if you pin up your hair, it can be kind of uncomfortable, just like for men who wear suits and ties to the office all day. So when you get home, you want to take that tie off because it's been strangling strangling you all day long. And if you're a lady, yes, indeed, you probably want to let your hair down when you. Are in the privacy of your own home when no one else can see you.、Uh, you want your hair to be in a more natural or messy way.、Uh, messy means disorganized,、uh, not very clean.、Uh, we wouldn't just say messy if we talk about something being dirty.、Uh, that's the, you, you'd, you'd use the word dirty. If you, it's different, isn't it? Yeah, if you have、uh, dirt on your feet or your clothes、uh, are all messy. Well, messy would means they're disorganized, they're disheveled. We could say that, but、uh, in this in this particular case, they just let their hair down and then let it fall over their shoulders, over their front, over their ears, whatever, whatever is comfortable. Yeah, messy. Uh, especially if you're talking about your home or your apartment, your room. If it's messy underneath the stuff that's on top of the floor or strewn over the desk, it's still clean.、Um, it just has stuff that you've thrown down.、Uh, some weeks are busy, and I'll just throw my my clothes and stuff on the sofa.、Um, but dirty means ooh, you really need to get in there with soap and water and clean it. Yeah, so it was a way to wear their hair in a more natural way. Just to let their hair down, but they would only do it the upper class women in the privacy of their homes.、Uh, Tom, Tom was、uh, mentioning today. We actually have guys who will put their hair up in what we call man buns. B U N a man bun.、Um, I think they're less popular than they used to be. They still look a little、uh, ridiculous to me, but that's my opinion.、Uh, I don't like them either. They're silly, but of course I'm not so young. I don't quite understand those things. But that is called a man bun. And yes, indeed, you want to let your hair down. And nowadays, this idiom means loosening up and behaving freely on social occasions like parties. So here we've got a phrase to loosen up. Mm. Which can mean a couple of things. It can mean if something's tight, you loosen it up. Oh, my belt is too tight. I'm going to loosen it up a bit. But this also means to just relax and not be so uptight. Yeah. So you want to loosen it up.、Um, maybe somebody at your party doesn't want to dance, or、uh, maybe they're just sitting in the corner reading a book because they have a test tomorrow.、Uh, maybe you just need to get them to loosen up. It doesn't mean to drink or take drugs. It doesn't mean that. It just means to relax, laugh, and have some fun. Behave freely on social occasions like parties, and parties are very important, especially if you're in school.
Okay, our next idiom is to be a party pooper. Okay,、mm. that doesn't sound very good. Somebody who defecates at a party—that's、yeah. disgusting. But that's not what it means.、Uh, this funny-sounding idiom actually comes from a term used by sailors. Okay, it's an old term, and sailors were the first to use this term. Sailors, of course, are people who work in boats on the sea. And saying they were pooped communicated that they were overwhelmed. That might have to do with the fact that boats have what is called a poop deck, which I believe is toward the top of the boat. And if the sailor said they were pooped, that meant that they were really tired or overwhelmed. If you're overwhelmed,、uh, you're just really, really busy, and you have all sorts of things you need to think about, and you're getting really confused.、Uh, if you're working toward a deadline at the office, you could be overwhelmed with work. I don't. Know what to do? There's so much work, and the boss is breathing down my neck to get these things finished. Oh, I'm so overwhelmed. Yeah. Now here we're using、uh, the passive. So they were overwhelmed. The be verb to be overwhelmed. It, somebody else is doing this to you. If it's your boss, they probably gave you too much work, and you're just you're feeling like you're drowning with stuff, and you can't get on top of it. But you can also overwhelm someone. By something you do, maybe you give somebody that you like a really expensive present or something they really like, and they feel overwhelmed.、Uh, maybe overwhelmed by emotion, they want to cry. So you can be overwhelmed, as Tom said, in different ways. Now, this word evolved or changed over time. To mean tired or exhausted, so that's interesting. I didn't realize it was originally used by sailors. However, the term "party pooper" now refers to someone refusing to participate in a celebration, or worse. Ruining the fun for others. Don't ever ruin the fun for others. Right. So remember,、uh, this phrase is similar in meaning to、uh, being a stick in the mud. Right. We could also say a bump on a log,、uh, which also means someone who's、uh, you know disturbing the festive atmosphere or just being kind of、uh, obnoxious when everybody else is behaving themselves. So yes, indeed, it comes from sailors, and they were very tired, overwhelmed. And of course, we've got the word "party pooper" in today's language. Oh, don't be such a party pooper. Have some fun. We're celebrating. So again, a celebration is when you celebrate. So of course, there will be a big celebration at the end of the month when we welcome in 2024. Okay, that brings us to the midway point in our lesson for today. Let's listen now to our Chinese teacher. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们今天要来看有趣的单元哦。这个有趣啊，就是有关于趣味片语。那我们这些片语有什么主题呢？当然、啊，因为十二月已经接近年底啦，我们接下来就会有年假，一路先从圣诞节到过年，然后甚至呢，寒假就要开始了。所以，我们接下来如果有需要大家一起来开个派对啦，或者是大家一起来做个期末同乐会。都可以用到这些片语哦。好，那我们这次的文章是设计成刻漏字。现在在大考的刻漏字啊，都比较不会太拘泥于很多很细节的文法部分。不过，一篇刻漏字五题，还是会有一题会是属于所谓语文的规则，就是俗称的文法。那我们一起来看看。不过，在第一个片语之前呢、啊，我们就先出现了第一题。这个第一题，我们先看一下整个句子，其实是谈的是在派对的场合当中，有许多的英文片语就会让气氛更为热闹。当然，在句子当中有一个被动式，被用在 party， 而后面的 make 加上受词，也就是我们第一题受词后面加上一个补语哦，补充说明。这个受词第一题，它到底是什么样的情况？后面这个形容词，我们来看一下 ，l i v e l i e r。本来它的这个形容词原型啊，应该是 l i v e l y， 叫做 lively。Lively 就是气氛很热闹啊，生动活泼的意思。那在这里用了一个比较级，所以如果我们可以用一些片语的话，可以让派对当中的什么好。那四个选项当中，可能就是 B， 你可能会比较不熟。B 的 resistance 指的是抵抗、反抗的名词。好 ，C 呢？这个 evaluation 有评估或者是评价的意思，所以如果我们在谈让 party 可以更 livelier， 当然是选 D 的答案。Atmosphere 气氛是比较适合的。
。好，那第一个片语我们就看到了 let one's hair down。字面上就是让你的头发放下来，言下之意是，如果你头发绑着，会不舒服吗？哎，真的有这种意思哎，因为其实整个片语要追溯到十七世纪的时候。我们接下来看第一个片语的第一句哦，第一句刚好也是考第二题，它是四个动词片语。那么四个动词片语当中的 A sets of。On 就表示出发前往某个地方，那么 B 的 day back to 啊，这个 day 的不需要用被动，就表示时间可以往前追溯到什么时候。那 C 的 stand up for 呢，则是有站起来、挺身而出、捍卫什么的意思。最后面 D 的 break down， break down into into。Break down into 就有分解成更小的部分的意思，所以我们如果要谈这个 idiom， 后面又加了时间，十七世纪，当然就是往回走到十七世纪。B 的答案会让文章通顺的。那当时是因为女性在公开场合都要把头发盘起来呀、啊，只有私底下才能够让头发放下来哦，轻松一下。所以接下来我们在这个片语当中的第三句也出现了我们的第三题。这个第三题，因为在整个前后三的前面是 in the 什么 of their homes， 在家才能够。比较自然，然后呢，让头发比较凌乱。所以根据上下文跟我们所谓的文艺的推测，第三题要选 C 的 privacy， 在家这种有比较自己有隐私的时候，才可以把头发放下来。当然，把头发放下来的话，就指的是呃比较能够。自然轻松，可是现在在社交场合当中，如果对方要你 let your hair down 的话，则指的是可以放开自我，不要受到拘束。好，接下来的第二个片语呢，则是令人扫兴的人 ，be a party pooper。这个 poop p o o p 真的本来就有去上大号的意思，对不对？可是其实啊，这里的 poop 它本来是一个水手用语的意思。好，我们先看一下片语的第一句哦。第一句出现在第四，这个第四啊，它倒不是考你知识性的东西，而是考一个复合形容词。好，到底这两个字要怎么都要怎么做变化呢？我们现在来看，如果我们今天要用关系子句来形容听起来很有趣的某一个人事物。听起来很有趣的片语，例如，那我们可能会说 the idiom that sounds funny。那这里第四题的关系子句简化形成的复合形容词，就是把 that 删掉，后面动词的 sounds 直接变成动词 ing sounding。那这里的 sounding funny 又要调到名词的前面，所以顺序也颠倒了，变成是 funny sounding。再加个连字号，所以其实复合形容词啊，它如果是从关系子句做简化，其实真的是有迹可循的。那么第四格我们就选，就选这个 D 的答案 ，funny sounding， 听起来很有趣。其实是因为水手，水手如果他们说 pooped 的时候，指的是精疲力尽啊，淹这个。字面上是被淹没，就表示精疲力尽或者是很疲倦的意思。但是现在的 party pooper 就演变成为拒绝参加一些庆祝活动啊，甚至还会破坏别人时光这样子。那我们现在，我们现在有时候英文课还是会讲到说，哦，你不要在那旁边不参与，不要在那边当壁花啦。壁花的英文 wall flower， 或者是哈、哦、讲那个什么东西很扫兴哎 ，wet blanket， 字面上叫做湿毯子，有没有？现在比较不常说了。如果说 party pooper 的话，就是比较现在的讲法，就很让人家很扫兴这样子。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We're talking about fun idioms that you can use with parties, especially. So get the party started with these fun idioms. So we've gone over a couple so far.、Uh, we started out with "let one's hair down" to just kind of relax. Don't be so formal or rigid or stiff.、Uh, join in on the fun that、uh, people seem to be having around you.、Uh, it's not very fun for the people who are. 
already relaxed and、uh, having a great time to look around and see people that are unhappy or by themselves alone in a corner.、Um, you know, it kind of takes some of the fun out of it. Don't be a stick in the mud, or as Tom said, bump bump on the log, just sitting there doing nothing.、Uh, try to let your hair down, have a fun time. It does mean to loosen up or relax, so that you can just not worry so much about what other people think and just have a good time. That's right, and of course, someone who goes to parties all the time and has a good time is often, oftentimes called a party animal.、Yeah. I certainly knew quite a few of those back in university. It seems like they weren't spending time on their studies, and they were heading to the bars or attending parties at、uh -oh. fraternities and things like that. So that would be a party animal. But、uh, we have the opposite here: someone who doesn't really like parties, or they kind of spoil the party for everybody. To be a party pooper, we did talk about that.、Uh, it comes from sailors, of course. They were pooped or overwhelmed with all the work they did, and now we apply this term to modern times with the term party pooper.、Uh, you're refusing to participate in a celebration, and you just ruin the fun for others. You kind of ruin the atmosphere for everybody. Uh, even today, though, guys, we still use that phrase "I'm pooped" to mean I'm exhausted. So you can use that. Oh, I'm pooped. Oh, we had to work too hard today. I wanted to mention、uh, Tom used that phrase "party animal."、Mm. A similar phrase we use is a social butterfly for the the women.、Um, butterflies go from flower to flower, right, trying to find the nectar. And that's kind of what some of these girls, usually girls, do at parties. They go from one to another, and they flit around the room.、Um, they love parties. They're very social animals. That's another phrase we use. Someone's a social animal.、Uh, so yeah, social butterfly. Oh, she's a social butterfly. Someone who enjoys those parties. Party animals. Sometimes I get that picture of guys who are drinking too much、mm. and doing doing anything but their schoolwork when they're in college, especially. Okay, guys. So the last one here is a whale of a time. This one I don't use so much myself, although I've heard it and seen it quite a bit. Uh, you know that a whale is a big mammal that lives in the ocean. So a whale of a time. What would that mean? A whale of a time. Well, we have to talk about the background of this term. In the early 19th century, people used whaler to describe something enormous or extreme, and it probably comes from the big mammal, big fish that lives in the、yeah. ocean. Although it's not a fish, it's a mammal. But in any case, whales are really big, and if you wanted to describe something enormous or huge or extreme, then you would call it a whaler. Oh, this is a really a real whaler. We don't really use It that way nowadays, but back in the early 19th century or the early 1800s, people would use this term to describe something really big, really huge, or enormous. And by the late 1800s, whaler had changed to whale on, which conveyed enthusiasm. So this is the late 1800s.、Uh, maybe my great grandparents were familiar with this term. I'm not familiar with this term because we're living in the 21st century now. Mm -hmm. But、uh, back in the late 1800s,、uh, they had this term "whale on," which conveyed enthusiasm. To convey just means to transfer from one thing to another, and in this particular case, it just means to communicate something. Somebody has this idea, and then they communicate this idea with somebody else who's supposed to understand it. So this conveyed or meant enthusiasm. Yeah, convey is an interesting verb that we'll use. It can mean、uh, to pass information along, or、um, maybe communicate by some way your feelings that you want someone to understand.、Uh, but we also will talk about conveyor belts. Uh, which are those、um, electrical belts that go around and around, and you can put items on there to transport them more easily? A conveyor belt. Well, the most common conveyor belt you'll see would be at those sushi restaurants. Oh yeah, I was thinking of the airport, but yeah, sushi sushi restaurants. Those are、uh, are very handy, and you just wait until that particular sushi dish comes along for you to grab it. So convey can mean to transport. 
things from one place to another. Here we are using it though, just to say this is how you communicate something, how you make something known to somebody else. So this shifted, you know, this phrase to wail on shifted. Into a whale of instead of a, a whale on,、uh, which I've never heard before. But again, we don't live, you know, in the 1800s. So a whale of, so it changed, shifted, moved to into a whale of with whale, indicating or meaning, pointing out something very large or something remarkable.、Um, yeah, a whale of a a whale of a a whale of a time. I just use it. Primarily for that, a whale of a time. Yeah, I can't really think of any other place to use it. A whale of a time, a heck of a time, a really great time. And today, having a whale of a time means having an exceptionally enjoyable experience. You just have a really, really great time. Exceptional means it's out of the ordinary, and、mm-hmm. this is an adverb here. So you have an exceptionally enjoyable experience. That is kind of difficult to say.、Uh, the、um, Noun form is exception.、Uh, yes, you have to follow the rules, but there is an exception. You don't have to follow the rules on Saturday.、Uh, that could be an example. So something out of the ordinary is an exception. So exceptional is the adjective form, and exceptionally is the adverb. I just thought of something. I'd forgotten this.、Uh, we do say in sort of slang or more informal English, he,、um, he wailed on me, which means somebody beat you up or hit you or were really abusing you verbally. Ah,、oh, I got wailed on last night by my folks, my parents, because I did something wrong. To wail on someone, we do use that. It's、uh, more informal though. Indeed, and do not、uh, mistake this word with the word wail, spelled W-A-I-L. That means you kind of sing loudly.、Uh, for example, if you get together with your friends who are all in a brass band and you're going down to Library Square, you're really going to wail. You're really going to make some noise and play some tunes for some people. But in this particular case, wail is the large aquatic creature that lives in the ocean, and you're going to have a wail of a time.、It、means having an ex. Exceptionally enjoyable experience, which of course we all hope you will if you attend Christmas parties later this month, or if you already had attended Halloween parties about a month ago. And here in the final paragraph, it says, "Next time you're at a party, why not try out one of these amusing idioms?" Yes, they are amusing.、Uh, something's amusing when it、uh, makes you feel good, when it makes you laugh, etc. And of course, if you're the life of the party,、uh, people will find you an amusing person. They'll find you quite a character. Yeah, it's fun to go to parties、um, if you enjoy them and be kind of the, you know, the the. The the life of the party. The life of the party. You're the most entertaining person there. Most people who are the life of the party, they have a lot of people around them. You want to hang around them because they're usually funny, and、um, everybody likes to laugh.、It、makes life better. Indeed, and of course, there are different ways to have parties.、Uh, if you're a, a more normal person, I suppose、uh, you will attend parties. If you go to university, and they'll have beer or a keg of beer or something like that. Or if you're a member of a church, you can have parties, but of course, you won't have alcoholic beverages. Uh, I guess that kind of depends on、it、which depends church you on go the to. Church, yeah. yeah, some may permit, permit wine or something like that. But in any case, yes, if you do go to the United States or Europe to study,、uh, then you might be invited to a couple of parties once in a while. And、uh, yes, indeed, if you're from Taiwan, they'll love you, and you will be the life of the party. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Here comes our Chinese teacher. 好，接下来就是第三个片语喽。第三个片语啊。A whale of time. 中间这里的 whale 本来我们知道是鲸鱼的意思嘛，吼。那鲸鱼真的的确在十九世纪的时候，所谓的 whaler whaler 是指很庞大或者是极端的事物。那后来到十九世纪末 ，whaler 变成 whale on， 就表示对某件事情啊热情洋溢。那现在变成什么呢？现在就转变成为是。非常大的东西或杰出的人，我们来先看第五题的地方。第五题啊，这句话先看一下哦。This 这这个片语 shifted into 这个说法就转变成为了 a well of。逗点之后的关键 with 这个介系词表示是一个附带状况
，那附带状况的 will 就会影响到所谓双引号的 will。指的就是什么什么东西，所以第五格本来指这个 indicate 指的意思是这个动词就会变成动词 i n g 啦，因为 will 指的就会变成是非常大啦，或者是非常杰出的人。以上就是我们三个很好玩、很有趣的假期片语。我们下次见，我是安娜，拜拜。That's all the time we have for today, guys. Thanks for joining us, and we hope the next party you go to, you'll be the life of the party. For English Digest, I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye. Bye.